Now that we configured our kinetic servo drives and motors to communicate with this Allen Bradley Compact Logix PLC and understand the basis of getting them ready to do motion, we're going to go ahead and wire our trainer up per our getting started wiring diagram. And the easiest way to find the wiring diagrams is to go to twcontrols.com slash getting started. That's the link that is on the insert that came with your trainer. And that'll bring you to this page that has some good info about unpacking your trainer and getting familiar with it. And then in section three, we have our wiring and up to get started diagram. And we're going to be following the RE5000 wiring diagram for the Compact Logics PLC with a few additions. And I'll put a link down in the description to the Wiring Enough to Get Started video to help you understand what you're doing and also understand syncing and sourcing because that's going to be really important and we're going to hit it a little bit more here in just a second. In addition to wiring buttons 1 through switch 1 to input 0 through 4, we're also going to wire switch 2 to input 5, switch 3 left to input 6, switch 3 right to input 7, then switch four left to input eight and switch four right to input nine. And then we have the enable. And let's talk about the enable because in the previous video, we took switch one and wired it to pin one, which is input number one on the kinetics. And that was a sinking input. And we went through how that meant that we had to feed 24 volt to the other side of the switch. In this video, we will actually connect those to outputs on the Compact Logics PLC. And since you have a sinking input, you will need a sourcing output. And coincidentally, the Compact Logics PLC outputs are sourcing. So we're simply going to take output number four and connect it to pin number one of our kinetics left hand drive and then we're going to leave that comment on from our previous video if you didn't connect it we're going to connect pin two to the zero volt of our trainer which is the left set of terminal blocks then we'll take an output number five and connect it to pin one of the right hand kinetics and pin two will also go to our minus terminal block remember when you're looking at the back of the trainer the right hand servo is the left drive and the left hand servo is the right drive. Once you're done, you'll be able to go through all of the standard Studio 5000 lessons the way it's wired. Since we downloaded to this PLC in the previous exercise, we don't have the luxury of using switch one to test our outputs, but we're still gonna test them. So make sure when you press button one, input zero turns on, button two is input one, button three is input two, button four is input three, Switch one is input four, switch two is input five, switch three to the left will be input six, switch three to the right will be input seven, switch four to the left will be input eight, and switch four to the right will be input nine. Now we can test our outputs without writing any program, and there are videos in the Basic Studio 5000 series that go through this. While you're online in the left pane, find the controller tags, and then let's find local colon one colon O, because that's going to be the embedded discrete output. And we open it up, and output zero is going to be our green light. So all we're going to do is put a one in it, and when we press the enter key, we get the green light. We put a zero in it, it goes out. We put a one in the yellow light, it turns on. We put a zero, it goes out. We put a one in output one, that turns on the yellow light. We put a one in output two, that turns on the red light. We put a one in output three, that turns on the blue light. And then we need to test the enables to the kinetics drives. To do that, we're gonna use the quick view here. And let me just show you the quick view just in case you don't have it enabled. I'm gonna hide the quick view. And right down here, we can right click the white space and show quick view. And I'm going to click the left axis and I can go down and there's our axis enable input inhibit. Right now that's keeping us from starting. We're going to put a one and I'll put one and that tells us it's not inhibited, which means our enable signal is good. And then we'll take the right axis. And we're going to put a 1 in output 5, and now its axis is not inhibited. Before you move on, go ahead and put descriptions in your inputs and outputs. Trust me, in a few lessons, you will not remember what you had wired where if you don't. And then you're ready to start jogging and positioning your kinetic surveys. And I've created this playlist right here to help you out. 